life. All right. Welcome, everyone, to Good Medicine Way, Albuquerque, New Mexico, here at Monday night, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. So I know I, uh, I just got off of a couple of Zooms these past couple of days, and it's like, how do you figure out what time Mountain Time is? And it's always uh, when somebody from the East Coast or West Coast are all trying to get on. So the um, best way to do it is ask Siri. <laughs> that's, what, that's my go-to. So I just want to welcome everybody, and thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, we've got a special guest tonight going to speak for us tonight. So we want to have an opening prayer. Uh, four directions. What I'm going to do is, uh, because sometimes when we go to places, um, we can't burn incense in the building. So we've got to be creative. And the one way that we've done it here is that uh, we place uh, some of the uh, cedar, sweet grass, tobacco in the different directions here. But I'm going to show another way tonight that uh, can go go smokeless. So we pray, and we'll want to take the uh, abalone shell that has the elements in there, and then we're going to touch it to the corners of the drum. Are there corners on a drum? No, there are no corners. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to touch it to the directions. So to the east, to the south, to the west, to the north, symbolically down, and then to the sky, and then to our heart. So Father, we thank you for this time together that we can come again and, and uh, worship and praise your name, uh, encourage one another with different speakers and with our songs and our words. We thank you for this, this time together. We ask this Christ's name. And we want to give recognition to the, the Pueblo people. Uh, we're on the land of the Pueblos here, uh, in between kind of the Sandia Pueblo and the Isleta Pueblo land here in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. So that leads me into uh, my little section. Uh, it's called Creation Insights. Our order of worship is uh, a little different than most order of worships that you do in your church. So uh, if you follow ours, we, we go with uh, what I just did with the prayer, the welcome, and the directional prayer. and. Uh, then we go into what's called Creation Insights. So tonight I want to share with you um, something very heartfelt. God created us, created animals, created the world, the plants, and all of those things, that different things that we, um, uh, in our Creation Insights, we reflect on and how we see God in that or God has spoken to us through that. Uh, so this past, uh, on, uh, on the 8th, Friday the 8th here, uh, a good friend of mine uh, crossed over. He passed, and I just want to recognize that tonight. His name was Makwa Church. He's uh, my good friend for nine and a half years. And uh, on the, uh, that morning, at 7.15 in the morning, something came over him and he breathed his last breath while we were walking. But he passed doing something that we enjoyed doing together, walking every morning and walking every evening. So I wanted to share this image that you're, they're seeing the mm -hmm. image now. So you're seeing Makwa, a pure, purebred German shepherd who, who we were gifted uh, some years ago by a breeder who was a friend of my daughter, Aleli and surprised her on a Thanksgiving day. Uh, or they were born on Thanksgiving, I'm sorry. And then they, uh, a month later, uh, they were old enough and weaned enough that uh, we were gifted one of the pups. And when we received that, that pup, uh, we called him Makwa, which means bear in our Potawatomi language. And because when we got him, he was just as fluffy and you couldn't tell him from a bear cub or a fluffy German shepherd. So we named him Makwa. But, uh, you know, even though he's gone now, there's so many memories that we have of those friends, the pets that we have. 
so God can show his love and the love of pets that they give us is everlasting. So I wanted to share that with you. I know God's love was shown through this dog, Makwa, in the time that we spent together. And I'm sure others of you have had, had pets and some of them have gone on. I think the only, only bad thing about owning a pet is that their lives are so short and the memories are so long. So I just want to give honor to that, that special friend of mine, Makwa, tonight and let's, uh, share that with you. So we're going to turn it over now to, uh, we got here, this, this month, or what's it? Yeah, it's this a, month it's in usually this week, Native but now we'll do this month in Native America. And Makwa's ears remind me of Bear's Ears National Monument. Here's another picture of Bear's Ears National Monument, which is right close to us down here in um, Utah. And it's a sacred uh, place for Navajo, Hopi, Zuni, and Ute uh, indigenous folks here. And really, it's been a battle back and forth uh, in the Obama administration. He declared millions of acres there to be a national monument protected. And then in the Trump administration, it was millions of those acres were taken away to, to start mining. And then there was a lot of uproar. And then now, uh, on the 8th of October, Biden uh, got it protected again. Uh, but there, the people of Utah are, are, people feel like they're, I mean, the natives are happy, but they're, the, the people of Utah feel like the, the people in charge of mining are really, really still have their eyes on it. And I was just reading about some other natives that are camping out in Nevada because the miners want to get the lithium there for all of our our beloved iPhones. I mean, that's a, a plight uh, around the world. You hear <coughs> South America, Indonesia, just just all these places being um, gobbled up and, and mined for uh, you know our, our cell phones, and, and it's really a conundrum. You know, what are we going to do, Creator? Give us wisdom, but um, but that's what's uh, new this month in Native America. I guess I could share one thing, uh, bragging on my son. This week in uh, Native America, uh, my son, Bapo Joni, was interviewed by the uh, Navajo Times, a weekly paper that comes out. And this past weekend, he came in, was a, it was a toss-up between 6th, 7th, and 8th place. They all crossed the line within hundreds of a second of each other. Bahujoni came in seventh, and in an interview, he um, he is unofficially the fastest Native, Amer Native American runner in New Mexico. So, and our friend there, Danny, she is a freshman at Albuquerque High, and she she ran uh, came in second, I believe. So very fast with the women's courses. Like the wind. So wanted to recognize them and their achievements there. So that was this Saturday, this past Saturday. So now my heart is just pumping there with pride. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mock was cheering him on. Yeah. yeah. Running with him. Yes. <laughs> All right. We got a song coming out.
We 
Preston, I don't know if you know, uh, I invited Penny Boyer here. She's Métis, all the way up from uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, to talk just for a minute or two about Orange Shirt Day to kick off the announcements. Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here. I uh, have been uh, just enjoying all the different posts and things that I have seen on Good Medicine Way on Facebook. And um, I just recently, I discovered Good Medicine Way through a friend of mine who is currently uh, in Winnipeg. And I uh, chose to move here about six weeks ago. So this is all relatively new for me. I was born and brought up in Montreal, Quebec. Um, I am Métis, like uh, Leah said. Um, Orange Shirt Day is... Uh, I, I, you know what, um, we have the privilege and, and I don't know exactly where to start sharing a little bit about it, but um, September 30th was the day that um, the federal government just recently recognized in Canada as Truth and Reconciliation Day. Um, it was just recognized after the uh, discovery of, uh, of 215 bodies in unmarked graves close to a residential school in Kamloops, BC. Um, after this discovery, there were also, uh, there was another find of uh, more than 700 bodies in, in graves in um, their Kawasis First Nation in Regina. Um, so, in commemorating that, um, the government decided to announce Truth and Reconciliation Day. Truth and Reconciliation has been a, it was a commission um, designed to get at the truth of what residential school system was, um, what was behind it, because it was, uh, there were uh, just horrible things, and I'm, I'm just not going to I don't want to go into them right now. It's not the time or place, but the, the children, one of the things that um, we did to commemorate that was um, uh, there were several events going on and uh, uh, in Winnipeg, especially, there was a huge powwow and um, it was just amazing to see all the ribbon skirts, the regalia, um, the orange t-shirts, I'm wearing my orange t-shirt. Um, and there were uh, there were marchers from the Human Rights Museum to the um, powwow grounds, and there were uh, dancers and speakers and um, all kinds of things that were going on. It's the first time that Canada has publicly um, 
uh, in such a, a public way recognized the effects of uh, colonialism and that kind of thing. So I was a little bit surprised. Orange t-shirts, actually, I discovered um, over the last little while that um, they originally started because um, there was a, a woman whose name is Phyllis um, Webstad. She's a residential school survivor, and she tells a story about how she got a bright orange t-shirt to go to um, residential school for her very first day back in 1973. Um, and that orange t-shirt was, of course, stripped away from her, along with very many other things. And uh, her story um, is what precipitated um, Orange T-Shirt Day in, uh, in September. And that, uh, I think she first shared her story in nine. If, sorry, 2013. So the orange t-shirts are not necessarily new, but the uh, the Truth and Reconciliation Day as a national statutory holiday is brand new this year. So. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Thank you very All much. Right, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you for telling us about that. And um, is there any more announcements? Uh, anyone have any announcements they would like to share? Well, should I talk about the book the women are reading, or were you going to cover that? Or okay, yeah, uh, all any women are invited to come. Wait. Oh, was someone signaling something? I didn't know if Heather's thumbs up was like I got it, or if she was or like, go "No, ahead. go ahead." <laughs> no, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Yes, all the women are invited to come. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, we're going through Kristen Dumay's new book, Jesus and John Wayne, uh, just about America's fascination with the, the big, um, you know, male John Wayne-ish figurehead, especially in uh, evangelicaldom in, in the church. So that is a good book, going through the, the history of um, the evangelical um, movement in America. And so that's every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. And you go in through Facebook. Through the, there will be a Women's Circle event there under events. All right. Anyone else got something out there? Uh, Zoom and, and live stream. Got an announcement? If anything, just type it on Facebook and we'll put it up. Well, even if, even if we don't have it during this time, just allow us to have it and tell us to send an announcement and we'll get it after the talk. <clears throat> okay, let's give it over to our reader of the words of today. Or did you want to tell them how to do the offering? Okay. Um, offering. Offering is on our Facebook page. There's a link up there for our, is it PayPal, right? Still PayPal or? Yep. Yes, so if it's still PayPal, it's up there. Just click on there, it'll give you directions on how to donate to us or how you want to fund us, but yeah, thank you. And again, let's give it up for Heather. Okay, uh, today's scripture is actually not from the ones that we are on, uh, and it's Matthew 22, 1 through 14, and John 9, 40 through 10 through 18. Uh, so this is Matthew 22, 1 through 4, 14. A rejected invitation. Creator sets free, Jesus, continue to speak to them using stories such as this one. Creator's good road from above is like a chief who prepared a wedding feast for his son. When the feast was ready, he sent out trusted messengers to gather the ones who had been invited, but no one came. So he sent out others with this message. I am serving my best meat, fresh from the herd. So come, the wedding feast for my son has been prepared. But some ignored the messengers and returned to their work, while others mistreated them and even killed them. When the chief found out that they, what they had done, he was filled with rage and sent his warriors to, to kill those murderers and burn their village to the ground. Then the chief told his messengers, the wedding feast is ready, but the ones invited have proved they have no honor. 
Waste no time. Go out into the village pathways and invite all you find to come to the feast. So they went and did as they were told and gathered as many as they could find, whether honorable or bad hearted. So the lodge was filled with many wedding guests for his son. When the chief came in to see the guests, he saw someone who was not wearing the proper regalia that was provided for the guests at the wedding feast. He said to the guest, how did you get in here without the proper regalia? Why have you dishonored my son by not wearing the outfit provided for you? There was nothing the man could say. The chief called his warriors and said to them, bind him with leather straps from head to foot and throw him outside into the darkness to weep and grind his teeth in anger. So you can see, creator said free, Jesus said, many are invited, but few accept his invitation. Uh, here's John 9:40. Blind guides. Some of the separated ones, Pharisees, overheard what he said to the men. Are you saying that we are blind? They asked. If you are truly blind, you would have no guilt, he answered them. But since you claim to see, your guilt remains. The Good Shepherd. Creator set free Jesus, told this story in the separated ones, Pharisees to the separated ones, Pharisees, for they were blind guides, leading the tribes of wrestles with creator, Israel, down a false path to a bad end. I speak from my heart, creator said free, Jesus said, to the blind tribal leaders. Thieves and outlaws do not use the gate to the sheep pen, but sneak in some other way. But the shepherd uses the gate to enter, and the gatekeeper opens the way. The sheep know their shepherd's voice, for he calls each one of them by name, and they follow him as he leads them in and out of the sheep pen. The sheep will not follow the voice of a stranger. They will run away, for they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Because he was using a story to teach them, Creator said free, Jesus, could see that they did not understand, so he told them the meaning of the story. I speak again from my heart, he said. I am the gate for the sheep. All who put themselves before me are thieves and outlaws, false shepherds. My sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate for the sheep. The ones who enter by me will be safe and, will, and well cared for. Following the shepherd, they will go in and out and find good food to eat. Thieves enter only to take away life, to steal what is not theirs and to bring to ruin all they cannot have. I have come to give the good life, a life that overflows with beauty and harmony. I am the good shepherd, the one who watches over the sheep. I will lay down my life for them. The ones who watch the sheep only for pay will run away when a wolf comes. Because the sheep are not theirs, then the wolf preys upon the sheep and scatters the flock. The ones who do it only for pay are not true shepherds, for they do not care for the sheep, but only for themselves. I am the good shepherd, the one who lays down his life for the sheep. The father knows me, and I know him. In the same way, I also need know each one of my sheep, and they know me. I have other sheep who are not from this flock. I will go and find them and they will also hear my voice. Then there will only be one flock with one shepherd. My father has a great love for me, for I lay my life down to take it back again. No one takes my life from me, for I lay it down on my own. I have the right to lay my life down and the right to take it back. It is my father who gives me this right. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Heather. Um, tonight's speaker is going to be a really good friend of ours. Uh, he's a staff worker and he's a staff at um, at South San Juan College, uh, which is on the northwest side of New Mexico State. Where it's on the four corners near the four corners area, and 
I'm just going to say it's on the checkerboard of the Navajo Reservation. It's most the easiest way to say it because it's in one of the major cities of that, of that area. He has grown a lot. I'm seeing him being able to his growth through Jesus, being able to see his teachings and his discipling through his students and being able to see them grow. And it's very honored to hear him talk and hear how God is allowing him to speak through him. Again, give it up for Rashawn. And let me pray for you real quick. Holy Spirit, we are here. We are one. Even if we are so many different parts of the country and so many par different parts of you and different parts of uh, social medias and platforms. Thank you for allowing the people here on Zoom and the people that are watching throughout different parts of the year, of the cyber network of years and everything. But thank you for allowing Rashawn to share his words and allowing us to be able to sh continually sharing, sharing them to the world and sharing them to people that need to hear them. Let us take a breath. Let the into the Holy Spirit into our hearts. Let us become one as a flock. In your heavenly name we pray. Thank you for entering us and being with us. Amen. Take it away, Rashan. Well, uh, thank you, yeah, um, Kristen and Heather. Um, I don't know if uh, if you can hear me clearly, <laughs> clearly. Um, but yeah, I just want to thank you uh, again. Uh, Good medicine way just to invite me here. Uh, this is this people to speak. And uh, um, yeah, um, uh, as I was asked to to just uh, speak again, um, I just felt like I was just understanding what well, trying trying to understand what, what I need to share. And uh, one thing I wanted to just maybe. To share um, the, the whole point of these scriptures is um, kind of relating towards like the my experiences in ministries right now, um, and and uh, uh, not only like um, through these scriptures um, I have been like reflecting and understanding more about like work with native students, but also just learning from my other relatives uh, before me before me that have that have done um, have done work uh, with. <clears throat> um, not only not only like with college students, but also like people within their, within their own community, um, people that are um, that surrounds them too. And one thing, yeah, I just want to give them credit too as well, because like um, this was definitely a journey, a journey of like what Native Ministries um, looks like right now. And uh, so I just want to share my experiences of how this working with Native students um, and this this this. Um, seeing that like uh to see them as good relatives and through yeah through my work um i think uh i, I well i just want to be able to introduce myself too as well um so yeah yeah um Genevi Ramon Ada Yuji Ramon Oh yeah. Um and yeah, so I, I introduced myself in Navajo. Um my my clans are I am a clan born for the Mexican clan. Um my maternal clan is Bitter Water and paternal clan is Red Rains to Water Clan. So uh through through um yeah, through our Dene culture, Navajo culture, uh yeah, we introduced ourselves. We're an actual society, which we come from our moms, our mothers, our mother's side of the family. And uh, yeah, so um, um, just to say, just uh, sharing more, more about my work with Native with college students, um, I think it, it goes it goes away it goes back to um, being part of a conference call uh, with Jesus Fiber Conference, and as um, yeah, as, as just being invited to come to this conference that talks about um, Jesus and culture, um, it it was I thought it was like. A place where I think we just uh, a conference that would see us as who we are, and 
uh, every time I go to this conference, I feel like I, I get to learn more about myself. Um, and then at the same time, I get to learn more about my trauma too. And uh, one thing, one thing that uh, I got to learn more about trauma um, was was when um, uh, one of the speakers actually shared her boarding school story. And uh, through, um, I guess, like back home or anywhere, like I don't know. It, to me, I always felt like it's forbidden to share to share something like that, to share a boarding school story because it's not. I don't know. I always feel like it's like uh, there's no place to share it. Um, and when she shared it, um, I felt like I didn't I didn't know how to respond. Uh, students were angry. Students were sad. Students were were questioning like if, if this is was if this was actually a right thing. Like was this a good thing? And uh, that made me like focus more on this, this recognizing more about my own trauma too, and how uh, I guess uh, what from what I learned from Native students is that trauma is real, but it doesn't have to be the end. And um, I feel like I believe that everyone's working in their traumas in their lives, but some um, there are folks that those who realize their traumas. Um, and and it feels it also feels like um, it makes um, I think my generation and the new generation uncomfortable about this because not only that we get to hear a story that we never we never experienced before, but also a story that um, like it's it's relatable because it makes us understand more about more about our own trauma. And as as I get to um, work with native students. Um, like for me, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a licensed counselor. Um, that, that, that was a part of the job description. <laughs> um, but, but for me to, to work with native students, I realized that, that, uh, as they get to hear something like a boarding school story or someone who shares their trauma, um, it, it makes them uncomfortable. And, and how, how I feel like these scriptures, shares a lot about Native students dealing with their own trauma. Um, it, it, it makes me understand more about that, that uh, yeah, Creator Sets Free um, is, is our hope. Creator Sets Free is, is the one that makes a promise to, to, uh, to, to, to know that healing is, is, um, will come to us. Healing will be able to, to, to come to us. And through, through uh, these scriptures, I feel like um, through in, uh, John 9, um, John 9, uh, 40 and uh, 10 to 18, um, a good friend of mine, um, Terry, Terry shared a, a, uh, a sermon at one of the with Jesus E. Barber conference. And it was, um, uh, it was in the 19, 2019 at the uh, Pima Maricopa Indian community. And as you get to, as you got to share about John 9 and 10, uh, I, 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 in a way, I got to experience it. I got to experience um, that trauma, that trauma that, that, in a way, um, is it, is it, is it the end? Is trauma, is, is trauma the end of all of us? Um, and when he, when Terry got to share that story, share that sermon about how this generation is a generation where, where um, healing, healing. Uh, Healing will, will come and 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 will end, end trauma. Um, it made me think a lot about how just working with a native student that was dealing with trauma, that was being triggered, um, that was seeing a lot of stuff that that wasn't there. Um, it yeah, it, uh, I just I just feel like like um, Creator Says Free was was there too as well. He was there to to um, to help help that student know that that healing healing um healing st can stop trauma healing can be able to uh the, and end that trauma there and uh um it, 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 yeah so so i feel like this story uh how how jesus got to share 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 with uh the pharisees about and and how the blind man how the pharisees were um uh, questioning the blind man about how why, why, why this blind man got healed? Uh, it made me feel, made me understand more about like how, and why, like, 
or for the blind man kind of represents native native people and um and and because the blind man already knew that that creator says free was there and creator says free was with him um and the pharisees didn't understand didn't understand why why jesus healed this blind man um because because uh uh through the context uh the blind man was was they, they thought that the pharisees thought that the blind man was sinful he was or his parents were sinful and uh it was a punishment of, of him for him to be blind and and for creator says free to heal them um that's where uh creator says free jesus got to share share more about the story the story about um yeah about the good shepherd and this for me to hear the story and actually experiencing it and to, to hear to hear a student dealing with trauma um it was it was I, I just thought it was kind of kind of crazy of how how Terry got to share it and all of a sudden like I started to experience it. <laughs> I started to experience it. Um and and that's the one thing that like I just wanted to share about how um like I I just doing the work that the trauma will never go away um with within within will never go away, but at the same time like it it is it is important to understand to to um to realize it, to realize it, and uh, and through through uh, native communities, they uh, from what I learned from the other native students about about their culture, about their people, about their uh, social events, that they they do these things uh, not only for them to understand who they are and where they come from, but also um, to 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 know that like they they can um, withstand. A lot of things that that uh, yeah through through the Western perspective um, is, is is persuading them to do, and uh, for for native students right now, native college students to be in college right now, um, I just got to I just I always observe that like they they know that they are doing this for their families or they're doing it for themselves, um, but at the same time. Um, I know that trauma will will eventually uh, catch up to them, and and they get and uh, and for me to to work with them, um, I I get to be able to uh, come in a good way and to to help them realize about their traumas, um, and it's it's interesting for for me to to uh, to to experience this conference where I get to hear um, a boarding school survivor's story. And for her to share her story for the first time, um, it's, it's I think it's important for, for Native students to share their stories um, because uh, that 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 um, and within the scripture, I think uh, the scripture shares that like it, it is important for 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 Native students to to recognize their traumas, um, and and uh, for for Matthew twenty two one through fourteen. Um, I, I got to be able to share share that because I feel like as as missionaries for the work I'm doing, um, it's really important to to um, contextualize it because um, I think I feel like Creator says free allows us to be good relatives um, and and missionaries by giving us the wedding wedding clothing and inviting us to the banquet. Uh, the wedding clothing can represent contextualizing the gospel as well as we uh, well. As, as we honor native cust uh, people's customs and dress for the occasion by wearing the wedding um, clothing and honoring culture we honor creators as free and have a chance to invite more people to the banquet to hear his good story but if we ignore people's culture completely it's like failing it's like failing to wear the proper clothes for a wedding and it may may bring this honor to creators as free um, so it goes both ways I feel like it goes both ways of how Within this scripture, um, um, this this as native students understanding more about healing and understanding more about how how trauma play plays a lot in their lives, and also if if it um, um, for missionaries, uh, um, yeah, for missionaries to, to to come to native people in a good way, um, it it. it that, that, that's part of part of the scripture in Matthew 22 um, by wearing the proper um, clothing to to honor to do the things that will honor native people and then honor his creator sets free. Um, so I just wanted to uh, share about 
um, another story that, that I got to hear, and um, uh, it was it was Mark Charles' story when I got to hear at W. Jeff um, uh, twenty seventeen in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, when he got when he got to share that story, I feel like it was it was a it was a story that 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 I think Native students can actually experience experience as well. Um, um, as, as, as some of you um, online um, might not know about Mark Charles, um, he wrote a book called Understanding Truth. And uh, if you get to read that book, it's a good book. It's a book um, about, um, about, yeah, about the doctrine of discovery and how um, terrorism, he shares about a, lot, a lot about America and, and trauma too. And as, as he included his story in this, in this book, um, I just feel like, like his, his story plays a lot with like how native students most likely if they experience a loss or if they experience um, something that might trigger them, but they don't understand why, why, why this is triggering them. Why, uh, and that, that gives a lot of um, anxiety, uh, mental health for, for, for native youth is, is, uh, um, it's on the rise too as well. And um, as, as what people call it, they call it therapy. Like they, uh, I know that universities will, will tell them to take therapy, which it, it does help. Um, but also, um, but also I feel like um, to, to include that and also to include like how native people um, who grew up on the reservation or grew up in the city um, uh, can definitely learn more about themselves and learn more about their, their, their language, their customs, about their culture. And that, that can help them to heal as well. Um, and, and, uh, so, so I feel like that when I got to hear about the story, uh, along with, um, uh, the person who shared her, her boarding school story, um, it's, it's, it's interesting of how, how, how trauma, um, played, can, can definitely, um, play a role and play a role in that. And when Mark got to recognize the trauma, he, he, uh, it was at a, at a, at a university event, <laughs> university, um, where, where he, he, um, yeah, he definitely, uh, got emotional and didn't, didn't realize why he was crying, but he was crying for, um, yeah, for his brother, how he, you know, he lost him in a car accident. And, um, when I got, when he got to hear this, when he got to share this story with, with all of us in, in Alaska, um, I felt like creator was, I, I felt creator's presence Helping native students to under to to, to to be in that journey of understanding that to to understanding why 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 that that is hurting them and um and then how how creative is we can, can provide healing in that too um I, I just want to share um um uh, a quote from um um from Richard Twist Richard Twist book in uh, One Church Many Tribes. And uh, yeah, I just wanna share, share a quote. Um, uh, reconciliation occurs when uh, whites too were invited to the platform to strike the drum because native brothers felt that this new blessing to worship should be shared with all. The, the Anglo brethren who have for so long condemned the use of traditional instruments and dance were now expressing their repentance to join in with their native brethren to play the drum that, uh, thus affirming the value of culture expression. In a very real, real, real way, they were returning, restoring cultural uh, expression to their rightful owners in the name of the Lord. Um, yeah, I just feel like I just wanted to, to share that quote uh, about reconciliation and how I feel like trauma not only goes towards Native people, but also goes towards everyone else too, everyone else, and how everyone is dealing, dealing with their own, within their own trauma. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and, uh, toward, um, I think to, to, to kind of close, uh, I just, I just wanted to share that I'm working on, um, I'm working on a Bible study series, um, and I'm mostly working with them, my own students, but also I just want to share with, uh, other, like, Native college students, uh, mostly with, uh, the staff in our, in Native University, how, um, this, this Bible study can, can, um, can, can help Native students, um, on their journey to not only um, know more about creative sets free, but also to uh, to know more about themselves. And 
um, the Bible study series um, through John 9 and 10. And it, it, it reflects towards um, uh, uh, Terry, Terry Wildman's um, sermon when he shared at the at WGF um, um, uh, 2019. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I can I can screen. Can I screen, uh, share my screen of this? Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, you should be able to. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, this this is um, this Bible study series is called uh, Creator's Path of Beauty and Harmony, and it's a three part um, Bible study where uh, as um, as Terry gets to be able to share share more about John nine and ten, um, I, it just feels like it's it's, it's really uh, important for native students to hear from more from their elders and and as 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 uh, just for native students to do go in this Bible study to to uh, to hear more from Terry. Um, yeah, Terry will get to share more about about, uh, about John nine Bible said uh, John nine and ten and and uh. Yeah, I just wanted to share 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 this um, yeah share this resources, but also uh, it's it's a resource that I, I feel like this can help uh, native students on their journey of understanding more about creators and three and and uh, um, yeah just just know more about themselves. Um, but yeah, it's a three part Bible Bible study where um, um, part one is what does it mean to see spiritually, and what is good shepherd part two and part three is a uh, who uh, becoming a wounded healer. Um, so through through Naven of Varsity, we want to uh, continue to make resources, and I feel like this hearing from the story and actually experiencing um, healing, I feel like I just wanted to uh, just, just to help Native students understand more about that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a resource that I've been working on, and um, um, yeah, it's just a uh, it's just experiencing working with uh, native college students, um, but it's more of my, my experiences here in the, in the Four Corners area, uh, working with native, native students at San Juan College. Um, and uh, San Juan College represents uh, 11 tribes, um, but also there, there is, um, we're surrounded by um, uh, colleges at like Fort Lewis that, that represents over um, 144 tribes or 150 tribes, and, and also tribal colleges uh, on the reservation and, um, also with our native um, uh, native tribes with the Ute people, um, the Apache people, and uh, our Pueblo Pueblo um, and even Pueblo uh, brothers and sisters. So so there's there's a lot of things that I've been uh, learning more about native ministries and and all these towards how how trauma is real. But but I definitely believe that it doesn't end there. So yeah so thank you thank you for letting me share share this and i just um it's always a, an honor and to, just for me to uh just to share it so yeah thank you all right were there any questions comments Just a quick comment to Rashan. I just really appreciated how you were talking about um, trauma being real, part of real life, but that it doesn't have to be the end. And I, I think that is um, that is what stuck in in my thoughts as you were sharing. And I'm just uh, very grateful for that. So thank you for sharing. So, Sean, I just had a question. Um, are, are you using the First Nations version in, in your work there? And how is it impacting your work there? What, what have you seen from it? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yes, I, I am using the, the First Nation version. And um, what, 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 I, what I realize, um, yeah, what I realize uh, this. Using this, using the first station version, actually helped me to understand more uh, about native, native students' mental health, and to understand more about their, their, their um, like the, their, uh, 
to hear more about their, their health spiritually, emotionally, and, and physically. And uh, um, this semester I'm working with Native students to, to focus on uh, spiritual health and, and also mental health. Um, but the scripture actually uh, goes good. The, the way that it, it describes more, more about Jesus, it, that's the one thing that like, um, that ha helps Native students to understand um, what Jesus is, is experiencing. He's, um, within the stories that we read, he's, he's experiencing a lot of, a lot of hurt, hurtful things um, and, 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 and how um, the people that, 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 he, that he minister, especially with the Pharisees, um, um, yeah, they, they, uh, they either, um, they either like follow him or they reject him. Um, but also like this, just going more in depth of like how, uh, talking with Native students, how, um, the, the experiences that Jesus is going through and, and, and we go, we focus more on that. Um, but it has, has definitely, um, brought, well, helped Native students and bring a lot of questions about what, what were certain things that that they get to understand more about themselves, and also how how they can have a better relationship uh, with the Creator, with uh, Creator says free with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. Got a little question, kind of a two part, but they're they're pretty closely related, but I. Uh, so in your experience with uh, Native students, what do they most need from organizations like InterVarsity and Good Medicine Way and groups like that that are trying to kind of interface and be a support to Native students? And then also kind of related, like what do you feel like is the most effective way that people who haven't experienced trauma and especially from like non-natives to natives, um, like what's the best way that people can come alongside people in their trauma and walk with them um, and support them on their path towards healing? Um, Cause I know there's lots of examples of how well-meaning people have really done unhelpful things. So, if you could give some insight about like what is what is helpful. Yeah. Um, I definitely believe that that uh, yeah, university and good medicine way has um, yeah, has has always been welcoming and uh, inviting um, the native community to be able to be part of a community where um, these things are important to talk about and um, and, and, and also, uh, what I realized from from, uh, from from the pandemic that as as native students are always honoring their elders and learning how to honor honor them, um, uh, I think it's important to 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 for them to hear more stories, to hear more um, uh, experiences uh, of what of what they went through, and how that actually can can help them along their journey too. Um, that's why I always always appreciate um, stories from, from from Casey or from uh, just just um, other people that that I get to hear hear um, here and, and and it's always it's always uh, it's always good to hear hear their stories and um, so so yeah I feel like uh, both both organizations provide that they provide uh, stories from elders that that I feel like it's it's a uh, it's, it's key for, for Native students to, to understand more about their traumas. Um, and, and for the other question, um, it's, there, has been, <laughs> there has been trials and error on that. And, um, and, and uh, I'm, I'm still in that process of how, how um, this is for, uh, for Natives and non-Natives, just for us, to, uh, for, us to, for us to help each other in that. Um, but but as 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 I said before, I think um, um, building uh, communities where natives and non-natives will come together and not only 
um, like shaming, not only not trying to shame each other, but also for us to listen, listen to each other. Uh, uh, it's, it's, I think it's really important. And uh, for um, both sides to, to, to have a chance to share, share, share their stories, uh, to share a voice, but also for, for um, I think, yeah, for both of them to listen to each other. Um, there has been a lot of events like that before, um, um, but um, I mean, there, some have have events, but sometimes like um, those events will will, will go will will continue on to just to be able to like be a stronger um, like a strong stronger event, um, like the Wood Jesus Eat Fire Break Conference or um, what Good Medicine Way is doing, and and just learning more about these. Um, um, these groups and these how, what events that that uh, that they provide. But also, I think it's uh, it's important to um, to understand like the history, the history of what what happened, what has happened there, and how uh, uh, non-native people can be able to uh, um, just just to, to succumb to a group group of non group of native people to uh, understand what is what has happened there and how. Uh, they um, they can serve um, serve them, um, but I know within within um, the both both people that I, I mentioned uh, with Richard Twist and Mark Charles, um, yeah these these people uh, have have definitely um, yeah have definitely worked work worked so much on just to have a vision of like a vision that that yeah, both natives and non-native people can come together. And uh, I like what Richard said, like we're, uh, we're drumming together. And as, as, as we're drumming together, um, um, there's a new hope in that. All right, Rashawn, this is Casey. Uh, in your group, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the makeup of your group? Um, you're, we're saying that uh, growing relationships with uh, non-natives and natives, is your group exclusively native or do you have uh, other races in with your group too? Like how many are meeting too? Yeah, we, we, um, we, invite, we invite people um, who are not native to, to come and they have come to our, our family dinners and um, and then yeah, they 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 uh, they observe they observe what we're doing, um, and uh, yeah, we have, there's a faculty staff that has been involved uh, involved a lot, and he's um, um, he's, he's a mix, uh, but he's he's under, he he feels that uh, he always invites other non-natives to come, and and because he sees how welcoming um, we, we we try to be and. Um, Right now, uh, before before um, COVID, we would we would all meet together and uh, for family dinners and Bible studies, and uh, usually it would be about um, between um, twenty to thirty people for us to for us to all come together. Right now, um, it has gone gone down, but uh, uh, but uh, from from before COVID to right now, um, I'm I'm really happy that uh, a couple of our native students have definitely graduated. I've graduated from from San Juan, and they're they're continuing on their education, um, and and we always invite them to come if they want to, if they want to, um, um, but yeah, like as, as we're like taking um, COVID protocols, uh, usually it'll be about ten to fifteen people. Preston, you want to lead us? Not you. You know, this, he's muted. I hear you, Casey. I'm trying mm -hmm. to listen to to a conversation with. I want. <laughs> All right. Um. So, Rashawn, let me ask you one question. Question. Would you turn back and do it all over again, or even would you turn back and do it differently? Yeah, I thought of that before, and um, 
Yeah, I had I had a really great conversation with a with a roommate roommate of mine uh, in college, and um, and and we were talking about like how how like how far are we getting getting into this like of like of um I've seen uh, non native people as as a, as a as a as a relatives and the conversation. Uh, well, it didn't, and we, we were still talking and we, didn't, we couldn't find the end of it, but, <laughs> but um, if, if, if I would have not be a part of this, I, yeah, I want to have, I want to know more about recognizing my own trauma um, and also understanding that how, um, how trauma works too, because, because it's, it's interesting like as as of right now, like after this after this pandemic, I know that mental health will be on the rise, um, and and that 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 will give um, staff like me um, and other people who who are working in the education system, uh, especially in college, they'll they'll, they'll understand like how um, how how is really important to to, to help help um, college students who are dealing with that. Um, and for me, if if I if I want to if I want to um, uh, be a part of this, um, yeah, I I, I want to know <laughs> I want to I want to know where where I'd be. But at the same time, I know that I I would um, continue to 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 just try to help my people and help my community. And that's the whole point of like why I'm I'm still doing this, just for me to uh, continue to help my people and help my family. Um, so either way. Um, um, I would still still be doing the things of what uh, I'm doing to help my people in my community, but I want to most likely maybe recognize my own trauma. All right, that's hey, cool. A question: If Good Medicine Way next year sometime, if we was to put on a program here uh, dealing with college students age. Uh, thereabouts trauma and healing would you guys come down to this yeah yes <laughs> we, um yeah I, I i hope i hope that a conference like that will will, will be in albuquerque and and that's something that i call students native call students will, will want to be a part of that yeah, because because we're we're in the process of what kind of information, what kind of conferences could we uh, bring to you know the college uh, scene that would be most benefit, you know, and uh, we're looking at how we can you know best serve you guys with the the capacity that we have here and uh, some influence. So we're planning on doing something like that when COVID breaks loose and we can start meeting together, those kind of things that we can offer here. Anyone else have something? One step at a time, Casey, one step at a time. Um, one thing we get, I always have to say is, yeah, trauma is so crazy. Like how I remember from Mark Charles is that the perpetrator, the pits, perpetrator induced trauma uh, syndrome. There are a lot of people that I've noticed that non whites, even natives, and they start understanding. Like if it was from a father to a, to a child or something, or a relative to a relative, I see that pits happening there within uh, have. How do you uh, work through that? How do you, you know, take care of your student to to allow them that they are doing the work to understand that they to not listen to that perpetrator anymore, Rashawn? Um, what I realized uh, is just yeah. Um, when you said about like the, the like the parent and student um, relationship, um, uh, that, that that made me think think a lot about how um, 
like like the, for 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 some for some college students they uh you would always think that like their, their relationship with their families is, is good um but once you go more deep it's not <laughs> it's not it's not perfect um and that actually can 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 also tell a lot about um trauma and and how um it's it's uh i said it's not it's not really like common but at the same time um uh there's there's oh when i when i when i uh, meet with um some of the native students uh always 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 help them to go to w jeff because w jeff actually helps them to understand more about about their relationship with their families and relationship with themselves and and i use that i use something like like i mean i, I try to make a curriculum with that but I, I use that to to know that it's important to to have a good relationship with your family um first uh as well as having a good relationship with yourself before building relationships with other people um but i mean sometimes it goes the other way, other way around um some people have better relationships with with other people than their families um um, but I, I always help them, always help um, Native students and uh, the students I work with. And, and it's, it's a journey to where uh, the, the, the college students, some of the college students have, have, had better, have um, been having good relationships with their families. Um, and, 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 and also understanding more about their traumas. And, um, but um, but I always uh, continue to encourage them to to do to do what they can uh, to to uh, at, uh, in college and after college. And um, I'm pretty yeah, I'm proud of them. I'm proud of how they have finished finished college, and and some are continue on to 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 go to, to get their bachelors, um, and and then also their their um, uh, their, their their masters. Um, but I got to learn from them. I got to learn of how to be a good relative of, of with them because they're, they're part of my family too. They're part of Creator's family. And being being part of Creator's family, you understand more about how to be a good relative. One more question. Um, do you have like a prayer team or do you have a set of people praying before and after? If you know you're going to have a set of event to or for a student or yourself to or something to be like that has to deal with trauma that's on a trauma um, underneath the trauma an umbrella do you allow these people to understand what's going on to prepare to help you prepare your heart and do you do it afterwards because i understand some people really, really need to take that time do you take that time for yourself um Wait, can you re rephrase the question again? Sorry. <laughs> so I know there's a lot of events of, like when we're talking to a student and they're like, uh, can you come with me? I want to talk to so-and-so or can you come with me to help me beat out my trauma? And when you're planning those events, you kind of have to prepare your body by with a prayer. You have a prayer team um, that's backing you up on it. That's holding you up, holding your arms up so that you can be able to hold that student up or that person up? Or and do you make sure to do it afterwards? Or do you have something that's making you to stand strong and tall to make sure that you don't get influenced or you don't have, it's easier to just dust your sandals at the end of the day, like I said. Yeah. Um... It's mostly, well, I think it starts with uh, building trust, building trust with uh, with native students, and um, yeah, uh, building trust takes takes a lot of time, um, a lot of time, and with, uh, but also at the same time, like if you build trust with them, they um, they get to understand um, more about how like what about prayer and uh, like hearing more about their hearing more about their story about prayer, um, but. Uh, it mostly depends on like whether they they would they would feel like it's the right time to to uh, to to receive healing, um, and sometimes like uh, 
uh, always feel like there's always opposition in that too. And, and, um, and uh, whether it be the person or a, a spiritual attack happening with that person to prevent them to get healing. Um, I seen that a lot. I seen, seen, I seen that. Um, and, and, and sometimes um, people, people um, would, would, wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> wouldn't know how, how to help, help, help someone who were experiencing that. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I would um, talk with them and, and ask them if, if they, if they would feel like they want to re receive prayer or receive um, that, that type of healing in their lives. Um, sometimes it, it, it can happen. It happens with them and also happens within, within the family. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would just get to build trust with them and ask them, ask them for, for their permission to see if, if they, if they want to continue on with this. Um, I have, I have worked with students where, where they, um, um, will understand, will start to understand more about the trauma, uh, through memories and, and as, as they get to understand get to understand about these memories um they didn't realize that it was actually trauma that they were experiencing um and and, and through um through, through with, within the people within the conference that we have uh it depends on like the, the people who are there and how i feel like the local people are the ones that can that have 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 helped college students have helped college students with within if they're if they're feeling attacked or if they're receiving healing um but yeah, it depends on where it is and how, how the students feel, feel comfortable receiving healing. So if anyone else has any uh, more questions or comments, uh, again, Sean, that was really cool. That was really good. Um, and thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have any questions, you can feel free to type them out on our Facebook page. Uh, if you want to, you can speak up now. And but we'll have a song from the Rovers leading us. So take it away, Grovers. Okay. Oh, I've got something down in the chat. Thank yous. Yeah. Quite a few thank yous on both chats, Facebook and live here. All right. We're actually going to have the whole gang, not just us. So we're going to do this Jonathan Miracle, newer Jonathan Miracle song here. Wait! 
<laughs> hey guys, I uh, just felt like to uh, give a prayer for Rashawn because uh, he shared with us a lot of good information with uh, Native Ministries. And the when I heard Preston talk about the encompassing prayers and have a team to help you, I was like, oh, that's an accessory prayer of having someone of a team, like one or more people, uh, be in your corner. Like they're, they're there uh, praying for you as you are continuing the work that you're doing. Um, and, I, and that's what I uh, feel like I'm being called to do right now, too. So, uh, so I just want to just Rashawn up and pray yourself. Uh, dear Creator, thank you for Rashawn um, and his words tonight. Thank you for the information that we have that we are gifted through him, um, that he himself has seen these traumas play out in his life and in his own life. So I just pray, Lord, that you protect him and that you uh, help him stand firm and uh, allow people to have his back too, Lord, um, during this time, especially because I know there's a lot of spiritual attack. There's a lot of um, things that are happening that the enemy does not want us to do or to happen. Um, so I thank you that your will is being done and these things are happening despite what the enemy wants. And I just pray for protection and safety, spiritually, physically, and emotionally for Rashawn um, and his students and his work in San Juan, San Juan College. So I lift these prayers up to Creator Set Free and I bind them in his name. I pray that all in Creator Set Free. Amen. Thank you, Heather. Uh, that's a really good prayer. Does anyone have any more questions, comments, anything on Facebook, last minute stuff? <clears throat> Not. I just want to share that, um, um, yeah, please pray for me. Uh, um, that um, me and uh, just uh, people I'm working with to 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 uh, start ministries at Uniden Gallup uh, Botanical University and the Next College. Um, I feel like I feel like uh, these 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 um, colleges and communities um, are are yeah. I feel like creator creators inviting me to 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 come in a good way to these to these uh, communities, and I, I just want to continue to learn learn more for learn more from creator about how to to work with the local people and how uh, just just uh, build ministries ministries at those at those places and. Um, most likely that will start, I mean, that's in the process of starting, but also um, it will be a process. Um, most likely it'll start um, the end of next, um, next year in the fall. Okay. Thank you, Rashan. We will pray for that. Um, okay, so if there's no one, we'll all pray for all of us and everyone that's watching and the rest of the ministry. Let us breathe. Heavenly Father, creator, maker of all things, you know our hearts and you know how we beat together as one. We are one her to you. We are one her to work together to be able to become, even when we are so many different color sheep, different color minds and our cultures are coming back, but our cultures are supposed to be mending our minds and our hearts towards you. We bring our cultures together to make sure that our, we bring every part of our culture that represents you and bring them together so that we can know how you, how you see us and how great you see us. Some of ours have baggage that we're carrying around. It could be, consist of small things of just that one person that we might have cut off today or a huge trauma that we've been carrying around from generational. Let us be able to ease that load off for today and be able to give that thanks and be able to give that, that load to Jesus at this end of the day. Be able to allow us to rest our minds, rest our bodies so that we can strengthen ourselves 
because the most part of growing muscle and growing bones are when we are sleeping. So let us grow in strength in body and mind. Let our spirit grow with you. Let our spirit grow together. In good name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. It was so great seeing you guys and being able to be part of this.